welcome to today. Uh, we're working on our quiz today, and then we're going to go through chapters 4.2, probably not 4.3. Um, we're just going to get to or, probably get to and. And then um, you have today, do today, Connect Math 2.2, 2.3, also Excel Lab. Um, one is late, but you can still get it for full credit today. So remember, you're supposed to have gotten it. It was due last Tuesday. Um, however, you can turn it in today, late, but you'll still get full credit on it. But last Tuesday was the time to like run into any issues, any problems, and figure that out because that was the official due date. Um, Tuesday, you have Connect Math Chapters 4, 1, 4, 2 due, and also Excel Lab 2 is due as well. Um, someone last class pointed out they had some questions about sig figs, sig sig significant digits. So we kind of went through, I put together a tiny little thing here to show you guys. So what you do is for decimals, you go to the first non-zero digit, so that would be 1, and start counting from there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The last zero on the end, these guys count. So this is 6 sig significant digits. If I do this one here, then all of a sudden, now it's 5 sig figs. You guys see the difference? You guys all good with that? Um, now on the large numbers, it works kind of the opposite. It's sort of flipped. So here, um, we kind of think, well, maybe it's been rounded. Looks like it looks like it might have been rounded to this decimal place right here, the one. So I would just count this as four sig figs because we think it, it it could very well be rounded to the to the nearest hundred. It might not be. It might be the nearest dollar. I don't know, but um, only I'm certain about it has at least four sig figs. It may be five. It may be six, but I know for sure it has four. Okay, good questions about that? Okay. All right. Um, so again, reminder, as you're working through your groups today, um, go ahead and, um, you know, pay attention to people who you want, like first, second, third choice of who you want. Give me three choices. That way I can at least get you one of them. And if there's anybody you really don't want to work with, let me know that as well. Just private chat that to me. Make sure it's private. Um, and then next week I'll start putting you guys into groups. Next I want to talk to you guys about this. Believe it or not, most published research findings are probably false. The reason for this is um, because we, when we, do you guys remember back when we did, um, in chapter two, we did error. We did, well, it wasn't random error. It was, uh, it was, sample sample error. Error. yeah, that's it, sample error, thank you. Right, so sampling error. It was sampling error and non-sampling error. Sampling error is that one you can't avoid because it's a sample. So if you take a sample over and over again, once in a while, you're going to get an unusual sample, and you don't know that. It's just it's unusual. Um, so if people do a, a do a survey or do an experiment, and they happen to get a an unusual sample without realizing it, then they think, oh, I got something cool, and they write a paper when in fact they just have an unusual sample. Um, so let's, I'll talk to you guys a, a little bit more about what I mean in the next slide. So I need everybody to, we're, we're going to run an experiment. Um, we're going to each flip a coin a hundred times. So everybody Google Rossman Chance Applet One Prop. So I'm going to go to that. I'm going to Google Rossman, R-O-S-S-M-A-N, Chance Applet, one prop, all one word. Google it. It'll come up right here. If you do the whole word, if you include one prop, it'll, it'll be this first one right here. Looks like that. Um, if you just did Rothman Chance Applet for some reason and you didn't put in the one prop, then you're going to want to grab this first one that says one proportion inference right there. Okay, so have a private chat when you have it up. Let me know when you are ready to go. Ten people, eleven, twelve. Again, you're Googling this right here. You need to be here. Okay. 
okay, it looks like people are good. So, we're going to flip a coin 100 times. Let's take a look at this. Probability of heads, 50%. That seems right. Let's see if I can make it a little bit larger. That seems good. So, um, that's great. Number of tosses. I'm going to make this 100. So, we're going to flip the coin 100 times. Good. Um, just do it once. And then this animate, turn that off. Click that off. And then draw samples. All right, I had 51 heads. You guys all got something different. Did anybody get 59 heads or more? Chat to everybody if you got 59 heads or more. Look, tell me how many you had. If you had 59 or more. Someone did. Yep, Will, how many did you have? Can you chat it for us? Sixteen. Anybody else have fifty nine or more? Mm hmm. Okay. So Will and Serena both had fifty nine or more. Which is unusual. So what would happen is if Will and Serena had gone to this had done an experiment and they flipped a coin a hundred times and say it cost them a thousand dollars for each flip, at the end they'd be like, Oh my gosh. I got 60 or 62 heads out of 100. We all thought that, that heads was 50-50, and it's not. It's something larger than 50-50. And they'd write this paper, and they'd get published, because that's an important finding, right, that heads, probably of heads is not 50-50, it's something larger. And then someone would try to reproduce that, and they wouldn't be able to, because Serena and Will just happened to get an unusual sample. So if you were to flip a coin, here, let's do this, actually, number of repetitions, I'm going to make this 100 times. Well, actually, I'm going to make it 99 times, because I'm going to do it a few more times. So you can see down here at the bottom, these are my results down here. See, I got 60, looks like 66 once, maybe 67, and I got, like, some low numbers over here as well. So if I've gotten one of these, I'd say, oh, let's Let's see, extreme, as extreme as 59 or more. So if I've been one of those five times that got that, then I'd write a paper because that's unusual. Our guy, let me talk to you guys. So in statistics, things happen. You might think that something that happens 10% of the time or 8% of the time or 12% of the time is unusual. But in statistics, we have this guideline of 5% or less. If something is 5% or less likely to happen, we call it unusual or unlikely. It's what we consider statist statistically significant, um, unusual, if it's 5% likely to happen or less. So that's what we're looking at. If the probability is 5% or less, it's unusual. So the probability of getting is super Assuming that heads is 50-50, the probability of getting it 59 or more is less than 5%. It's unusual. They would write a paper. And like I said, you, 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 you can't reproduce it. When it tries to get reproduced, you can't do it. So there was this thing that's called the Reproducity, Reproducity Project, Reproducity Project, I don't know. Um, and they tried to re reproduce all of these experiments, and 70% of them, roughly, they could not reproduce. Because what happens is, if you do this example, like we all did this example, and all of us who got this 95% of usual ones, if, if our results were, were typical, 95, you know, the other 95% of us, we would just ignore our, our results and say, oh, darn, it didn't work out. I guess Ted's really is 50-50 we would not write a paper. Those 5% that got unusual results, they would write a paper. Not because heads is not 50-50, but because they got an, an unusual sample without realizing it. So that's kind of you know, what happens. That 5% that got an unusual result would publish a paper. Um, so I have a video to show you about this, but it's not working. I've got to figure out how to get the... Um, 
the words working on it, the closed captioning, and then I'll show it to you guys next 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 class. Ask me if I forget. Bug me about it. Okay, next. Uh, just a quick reminder. How about uh, Guru? Go ahead and read for us. The sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of a probability experiment. Experiment, toss a, cane, toss a coin, sample space, head or tail. Roll a die, one, two, three, four, five, six. Answer a true or false question, true or false. Toss two coins, head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. Exactly. So again, the sample space is a list of all possible outcomes for an experiment. Here's your quiz problem number one. The tree, tree guy yammer should look something like this. I think all you guys kind of got that pretty well. And then this is your sample space, all possible outcomes. What was the probability of getting exactly two tails? Um, let's see what some people said. We'll do that. It's easier. Exactly two tails. Um, three eighths. Yep. That's good because exactly. Exactly two tails. Let's see, that's this guy. Oh, yeah, they marked them off here. One, two, three. Good. Now, next question. Uh, what's the probability of getting no tails, no tails at all? This is the one that's no tails at all. Heads, heads, heads. Everybody on board? Now, one out of eight. What's the probability of getting at least one tail? So that means you have one or more tails. That's all these guys down here. You folks are not as familiar with at least one, maybe. It helps to think of it, again, remember, relieve your working memory, put things in terms that are familiar to you to start off with. So think of it in terms of siblings. You're all familiar with siblings. What does it mean if you have at least one sibling? If I have at least one sibling, that means I have how many? Yet yeah, one or more. more, one or more. So at least one tails means one or more tails. So that's all these guys here. These ones all have at least one, one or more tails. That's at least one. Seven out of eight. Are they related to each other? This um, no tails and at least one tail? Yeah, because one subtracted by the probability of uh, one of them equals the other one. Um, what you'll notice, if you look at these two groups that I circled, the red group and the blue group, no tails and at least one tails, if you put them together, that's everything, right? Red is one group, and then blue is the rest of it. It makes up together to make up the entire sample space. These are what we call complements. So, um, so yeah, they're related. They're complements. Complements is spelled... C O M P L E M N compliments. Like that. Good. So fix your notes if you didn't, if you don't have these things correct. Um, what this group said was great as well. I love that. So um, good. There's more than one way of saying it. Good job. All right. Moving on. Um, how about Danny? Go ahead and read for us. An event is a specific outcome or a set of outcomes. An event could be getting a total of 10 or more when rolling two dice. Another event would be getting two fours when rolling two dice. Good. Kristen, go ahead. Kristen R. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, probability of an event occurring when all events equally likely, number of ways the event can occur over total number of possible outcomes. Which is the same as, which is the same as, keep going. Number of successes over number of outcomes. What is the probability of getting exactly one girl when you have three children? Probability, one girl. Perfect. Um, 
I'm actually not going to do these today because I don't have the sheets up, but that's okay. Um, but again, the probability of that occurring when all events are equally likely, number of successes over the number of outcomes. Um, here's quiz problem number two. Let's see what people said on that one. Okay, this looks good. So, control plus. No, oh, that doesn't do it. All right, no worries. Um, so, probability that you pick a yellow or chocolate lab. Um, you know, I'll do it over here. That's okay. I'll make it bigger. So a yellow lab or a chocolate lab, right? So these have no conflict between them. So you can just add them up. 8 plus 6 is 14. 14 out of 20. Okay. How about the next one? A female lab or a black lab. So these are the black labs. These are the female labs. So we have our 6 and our 8, but here's the thing. Do you guys see these, um, these, this 3 right here? I'll try to get a different color. These 3 right here, they're being counted in this 8. They're also being counted in this 6. They're being counted twice. So they're being double counted. We have to subtract off one of them, so they're only being counted one time. It's not fair to count them twice. So 6 plus 8 minus 3, that's 11. So like they had here, 11 out of 20. Good? So 6 if you need to, and um, we'll move on to the last one. The last one is probably randomly pick a male given it's yellow. Given it's yellow means you know it's yellow. You know it's in this group here. It's not here. It's not there. It's one of these six puppies. So now it's not out of 20. Now it's just out of six because you know it's yellow. They're saying, hey, it's a yellow puppy. I've got this puppy. By the way, it's yellow. Okay, it's got, it has to be one of these six. So now it's out of six. How many are male? Four out of six. Good. Okay. So remember how to do these because once you guys get the formulas later on today, people are going to get all panicky and stressed out and they're going to, it's all going to go out the window. You know how to do these. They're not totally crazy hard. Just look at the table, figure it out. I'm going to give you rules. If you have a table, you don't have to use those rules. You don't have to use the formulas. You don't need them. If you have a table, just look at it and do it and, you know, do it the way you know how to do it. So don't let the formulas get in your way of what you know. Okay. Next. Quiz problem three from homework. Ha, huh, let's see if anybody got this one. Some people can get to it. Oh, they got to it. Okay, cool. All right, so let's see. Um, pediatrician. Uh, let's see. There are, let me, all right, so here's the thing. This is why I put this on here. This is going to be a homework problem of yours. I really feel like they should have spent the extra bucks to just draw a few doggone lines in here and make life a little bit easier. All right, why couldn't they just do that? So if you need to, if you want to, just, you know, draw some lines when you get this on your homework, and then I'll make it easier to fill it in. You can say, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to put in the totals here. That's 4. That's 10. That's 18, and that's uh, 30, 32. And, you know, there's no reason not to just make your life a tiny bit easier by having these. And then these totals here would be um, 20, 29, maybe? Uh, I can't see now. Oh, 26. And 6. Oops. Okay, fine. I'll do a second one. Six. For whatever reason, she's not working well. Um, all right, I'll put it up here. Twenty-six and six. There. 
All right, so now, pediatrician, 10 out of 32. That's pretty straightforward. That's what they have over here. The next one is a little bit tougher. Orthopedist or MD. So I want all the MDs. That's these guys. I want all the or orthopedists. That's these guys. Or I want all of them. Or means this one or that one. As long as you're orthopedist or you're an MD, I want to grab you. I want you into my team. I want to, I'm taking you in. So MDs, there are 26 of those. Orthopedists, there are 18 of those. But if I just add those, I end up with 44. I can't have 44 people out of 32. If I have 32 people, the most I can grab is 32. I can't grab 44 people if I only have 32. So this can't be right. That's more than 100%. That's more than all of them. So instead, I have to look for this overlap, right? So there is this, this 15 here that's getting counted in the 18 and it's getting counted in the 26. It's getting counted twice. So I need to subtract 15 and then we'll have 29, which is the correct number. So then we get 29 out of 32. Now, if you wanted to, you could just, you know, say, okay, well, I want all the MDs, these guys, plus this guy, and just add those, those four numbers up. That's totally fine, too. You don't have to do the, you know, total plus total minus the double, you know, just, but, you know, you can do it this way as well. I just wanted to give you guys a chance to think in terms of the formulas in case you wanted to use them or in case you saw them. And again, this will be on your homework, and I really recommend drawing lines, you know, between these to make your make it clearer and cleaner. Um, problem four we're going to do next class. I, I think this is in the homework. Maybe it's due on Tuesday. So if you get it and you get, and the, you know, the, the help buttons don't help you out, don't make sense to you, don't spend a ton of time trying to figure that out. I can, we, we're, we'll go through it in class next quiz, um, and you'll, it'll make more sense then. But, uh, you know, don't spend more than, like, three or four minutes trying to figure it out. Um, but you can spend three or four minutes. You yeah, know, that's, that's good. All right, now we're going to talk about observational, experimental or observational probability. We're back to our notes. So you are in notes problem. We'll finish that one. We are in problem. We did that one, too. Page 9. So the very top one on page 9, we did that last class. I didn't have you guys write it down. It's given. Given means you know event A has occurred. So you adjust the possible outcomes with that restriction. For example, given male tells you a male has been selected. So you can ignore the females. And it's written like this. Given that long, straight line, straight up and down. Given male. Um, all right. So now we're going to fill out the next part of this. And let's get a reader. How about Carla B? Okay. Um, from the blank. From the beginning. This over here. Okay. What if we don't know the exact probability of something? The probability of an event is estimated by the frequency of the event divided by the total frequency. Remember, histograms are relative frequency. Again. Probability of success equals numbers of successes over numbers of outcomes. Mm -hmm. read, um, read the title for us. We, you didn't do that part. Experimental or, or, or observational probability. Right. People listening in are going to need to know that because that's what they should be filling in that blank. Um, so, for example, the probability. Remember, anytime you see this capital P, it means probability. When you see the parentheses, it means of. Probability of. O type blood. So the probability of O is your relative frequency. How do you find the relative frequency? It's the percent that's in that class. You take the number of people things in that class, there are 21 O's, divide by the total frequency, 21 over 50. That is its relative frequency. That's also its probability based upon this group. Right? So relative frequency is the same thing as probability. 
for that group. It's a probability you pick someone in that group and they have that characteristic that they're, you know, they're, that they're O-type blood. All right, let's get a reader for this. This is a good long one. How about um, CJ? Go ahead. In a survey of students at Las Vegas College, they were asked how many classes they are enrolled in the semester. Thirty-nine are taking one class. One forty-six are taking two classes. Two thirty-three are taking three classes, and fifty-two are taking four classes or more classes. One of the people surveyed and randomly selected find the probability that he slash she is taking one class. Is it unlikely to be taking one class? Consider an event to be unlikely if its probability is 0 0.05 or less. Total survey is 470. Perfect. Everybody take a minute. Try to find the answer to that problem and private chat me your answer as a fraction. A fraction's fine. And then maybe um, use your calculator and, and find the decimal place as well. So again, find this probability. Probability of taking one class. Just one, not one or more, one class. Exactly one class. And private chat that answer to me. Four people so far, that's it. Eight people, nine, ten. Come on, folks. Part of your participation grade. Get some answers in there. Gavin, I think you mistyped that. Do it again. Okay, so how many people are taking one class? 39. And remember, relative frequency, the total in that class divided by uh, the number of people in that class divided by the grand total. So that's 39 over 470. That's how you find the probability, the frequency, the relative frequency. Take the number of people in that class, divide by the total. That gives you the relative frequency, which is the same thing as the probability. If you divide those numbers, you'll get 0 0.082, I think it is, or 0.083. I don't know. What is it rounded? Anybody around it? Well, 0 0.08. And is 0 0.08, 0 0.05 or less? Is it, this is 8, um, a way of thinking about cents is, or percent, is to think about them in terms of cents. This is five cents, right? You guys are all familiar with money? You all know money. This is five cents. Five cents is the same as five percent. This is eight cents, so it's the same as eight percent. So is this five percent or less? No. So it's more than five percent. Uh, why am I even doing that? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna type it. More than five percent. So likely, right? Um, or I'd say not unlikely. Not unusual. Good. All right. Move it on. Oops, or maybe not moving on. There we go. Okay. Um, how about 
Sky, go ahead and read for us. Note that the experimental or observational probability is not always the same as the population. In the previous example, the survey students might not match the entire school exactly. If I were to flip a coin 10 times, I might get four heads. The true probability of the heads is not four times. Exactly, thank you. Right, so what you observe or what you do in an experiment is not necessarily the actual true number. So just remember that. If I flip a coin 10 times in my experiment, if I get four heads, it doesn't mean the probability of heads is four, head, or four, it's four out of ten. It's an experiment. It's not always going to be accurate. Okay. Probability rule number one. How about, um, I have someone chosen here. Where'd they go? Gavin, go ahead and read for us. Probability rule one. Probability of any event E is a number from zero to one, or zero percent to a hundred percent. This is denoted by zero less than or equal to P. Uh, probability of? Yeah, probability of uh, e, e. P, mm -hmm. E, yeah. Uh, less than or equal to 1. Keep going. Uh, probability E equals um, number of ways that can occur over the total number of positive outcomes. The probability cannot be negative, nor can it be greater than 1 or 100%. In the moral of the story, if your probability is 2, something is wrong. Right. So guaranteed one of you guys will tell me the probability on you know, the next exam, the probability is 14 or something like that. 1,400%, that's not even possible. You've forgotten it's 14 out of 20 or something like that. So don't forget that. It's your probability is always going to be a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. Um, and, don't, and also remember this, this parentheses after the probability after the capital P is of. Probability of parentheses is of and then whatever's inside. Good. Thank you. Probability rule number two. How about Brenda? Go ahead and read for us. Okay. Um, probability rule two, the sum of the probabilities of all the outcomes in the sample space is one, or 100%. You can't have 50% chance of heads and 25% chance of tails and zero chance of anything else. Right, thank you. So all of your probabilities in your sample space had darn well better add up to one or 100%. Those are the two main probability rules we're gonna be using. Those are the only two that really matter, honestly. The rest of them are kind of obvious and fall into the rest of them. Um, so I'm gonna give you guys, I don't know, three minutes to work on Jamboard, this Jamboard, problems 80, 90 notes. Do not spend a lot of time on eight. If it doesn't make sense to you, just kind of, what I'm saying is, what's the smallest a probability can be, any probability can be, and what's the largest any probability can be. Right, so give me that, and then do problem nine. Um, and like I said, three minutes, hop on in, and, um, and then we'll come back here.